Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Reiterter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is a patient who suffers from otitis externa. So otitis externa is an umbrella term given for an infection or inflammation of the outer uh, ear. Uh, and the outer ear consists of this, the cartilage, which forms a satellite dish on the outside of our ear, the ear canal, and the outermost membrane of the eardrum. So the eardrum has three membranes. So if the outermost membrane is uh, infected, we still label that as otitis externa. And they also have some, uh, some wax and dead skin. Now, there is a bit of inflammation at the entrance of the ear canal, which narrows um, the entrance route. But once we're into the ear, uh, the ear canal does widen um, somewhat. Now they've got this occluding dry skin um, that I'm just trying to peel away from the ear canal walls. There is also a bit, uh, a bit of discharge just at the base of the ear canals and you, you'll have a better view of that once I remove this plug. Now this skin is very crusted, uh, it's strongly adhered to the ear canal and you can see that um, even with the sucker and all these wriggling movements trying to dislodge it, it's, it's quite difficult to extract. And I think in a minute, I'm going to revert to an ear hook. I'm going to try and get over this plug of dry, crusted wax and skin. Now, because of the ear anatomy, because it's slightly inflamed, it's a bit tricky. Now, you can see more at the base, it's a bit softer, whereas at the roof, this skin is a bit more crusted and hardened. So it's a bit tricky to use the hook just because the entrance is quite narrow so to insert the hook and get over it. You can see we've got a bit of an opening there, but I managed to insert the hook and then slowly glide over the plug without making contact with the canal walls. And slowly but surely, I'm just extracting the hook out of the ear. And as I am, this plug is also being removed. So that was the main occluding blockage that we've cleared and you can see the eardrum there and you can see this more softer wet discharge and dead skin at the floor at the base of the ear canal. Now you may think that the ear canal is um, clear because we can, you can visualize it however if you stay tuned the eardrum itself has got a thick layer of dead skin. I'm going to spend the best part of 10, 15 minutes trying to remove that actually. It was really quite complex, but to the naked eye, it appeared okay. And when I eventually managed to remove the crusted dead skin off the eardrum, the patient can hear significantly better. But before we uh, uh, um, are able to do that, I just want to clear the ear canal. So you can see we've got this crusted layer of dead skin, both at the roof of the ear canal and also on the anterior portion of the ear canal, so the front part. And I'm just using a fine end. With a fine end, sometimes you can get, although the, the, the fine end suction probe is less powerful, because the tip is narrower, the suction is sometimes more concentrated. So in one way, it's less powerful, but in other ways, because it's the, the power that it has got, the reduced power is more concentrated, you can sometimes get a better suction grip with a fine end. But the problem was, when I used the fine end here, if I remember correctly, that it just got blocked, because uh, it's uh, one of the downsides of a fine end, because it's, it is narrower, it can more easily get blocked. So if I had to just go back to the full size standards on the suction probe, and we're just trying to work this now, I am trying to avoid using any drops because of their otitis externa. Whenever you've got a patient who attends with an ear infection, you want to avoid introducing any fluids in the ear where, where possible. Now, it wasn't possible in the end. You'll see that when I'm removing the dead skin off the eardrum. I did manage to remove all this without using introducing any drops, but I did have to revert to using drops in the end. And that's because with uh, the main cause behind this patient's otitis externa is... Uh, they actually got water in there. They've been going, um, they've been swimming a lot recently and they haven't been getting, um, keeping their ears dry. Also, the patient's quite open and honest when they're in the shower as well. They had been getting water purposely in the ear. And that had led to swimmer's ear and swimmer's ear uh, is a form of otitis externa. So 
by virtue of the fact water caused this infection, we don't want to then introduce any water if possible in the air. Now, uh, I am going to use some olive oil drops, which is obviously free from water. It's 100% medical grade olive oil. But with skin, oil is less effective. So in the end, I did have to use some sodium bicarbonate drops. Um, sodium bicarbonate drops is water-based. Um, but we ensured that uh, we dried the as much as possible after, after it's used. And I've asked the patient to uh, obtain some acetic acid spray for the ear over the counter. And that will help uh, further dry the ear and expel water. And acetic acid is good because the natural pH of the ear canal should be slightly acidic, around 5.4 on the pH scale. And when you've got otitis externa like this, if you were to take a, an ear swab and calculate the pH level, it will become more acidic. And in, in acidic conditions, the bacteria and fungi can flourish a bit better than in acidic conditions. So the reason why the ear is acidic is, is to help prevent an ear infection. Um, and acetic acid, what that does, it just reacidifies the ear. And by reacidifying the ear, it helps to inhibit bacterial and fungi growth. Um, the oils that are natural oils that are secreted by our ear are also um, slightly acidic in pH. So there's, uh, there's an, a fatty oily substance called sebum, and that's secreted by the sebaceous glands, and they're found and located at the, the root of the hair follicles, which are on the external third of the ear canal. You can see a few of the hair strands there. So at the root of these hair strands, where the follicle is, you've got the sebaceous gland, and that secretes an oily fatty uh, substance, the same substance found in our scalp, the oil in our scalp. And sebum consists of alcohols, squalines, fatty chains uh, of um, saturated fats. Uh, it also contains cholesterol. So a lot of organic compounds consist of sebum. Uh, another uh, oily secretion made by the ear, if you have the particular gene for that is, is um, an oily sweat and that's secreted by the ceremonious glands and again the ceremonious glands if you have that gland is found at the root at the hair follicle itself and the majority of uh, people from European or African descent have this ceremonious gland now if you have the ceremonious gland it means that you also have the same gland in your armpits and it's this gland that perspires and sweats so I've just had to um, use forceps on a couple of occasions. Uh, I'm just trying to remove this piece of skin as well using forceps. Now these oils that I've referred to, so sebum and this oily sweat, they are also naturally acidic uh, in nature. And again, uh, that helps the ear to, poo, uh, to stop it from, any bacteria in the ear from multiplying and uh, replicating itself. And it's the same for fungi. So yeah, the acidity in these oils have anti- microbial effects that's what we we call it and that's why for some people um using an olive oil medical grade olive oil is actually can sometimes also provide you with antimicrobial benefits because uh, olive oil um, is actually slightly acidic in ph as well but for this patient, we just recommended acetic acid. I think this the pH level of acetic acid is around 2.4, so it's very acidic. And it will just help with this uh, otitis externa. Now, we've cleared the ear canal, uh, the majority of the ear canal, but we've just got this crusted layer of skin now on the, on the eardrum. And this is the complex part of the procedure. Well, it's been quite tricky so far anyway, but this is... Um, the most complex part of the procedure now we're slowly peeling the skin away and to the naked eye the eardrum looks fine you would have thought well uh, the eardrum looks healthy enough it's a bit dull but it's it's fully visible but they've got this this layer of skin that I'm peeling it's also attached itself to the eardrum and you'll see in a minute as I start peeling the skin away the eardrum itself will become in view and you'll see the contrast so the eardrum itself, um, it has three membranes. The outermost membrane is made up of the same skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal. So it's a very thin layer of skin. We call it an epithelial layer of skin. And it's less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness. 
the innermost membrane of the eardrum, that's the mucosa. So that the mucosa uh, also lines the middle ear. And the mucosa is more of a, uh, it secretes uh, mucus, and that's the name, uh, hence the name mucosa. And we find that in our, in our nasal passages as well, the mucosa. So it's, it's a bit more damp, that skin. And then the middle membrane of the eardrum, that's a f uh, f full of um, fibrous and connective tissue. And that's what gives the eardrum its strength and rigidity. So you can see I peeled some of the skin off the back part of the eardrum and I went in with the forceps just to see if I can remove it in one piece. But although I did manage to get some skin off the eardrum, that was just the first layer of skin. I think there was like multiple layers of dead skin. So you can see I did remove quite a fair amount of dead skin with the forceps, but then I've got this undercoat, if you like. And this was a lot more tougher. So what's what happens is that the skin that um, the most lateral part of the eardrum, so when I say that, the outermost membrane of the eardrum that's facing us, as I mentioned, that's made up of a layer of epithelial skin. And as this epithelial skin dies, it should shed and migrate naturally away from the eardrum towards the entrance of the ear. We call that the epithelial migration. And then underneath that, you've got a fresher layer of skin. That fresher layer of skin itself will eventually die and shed and migrate out of the ear, and that will be replaced by another fresher layer of skin. So it's a continuous cycle, it's like a conveyor belt. And this skin migration, it's roughly about 1.5 millimeters to three millimeters a month. So obviously it varies from individual to individual. And it can, so it can take the best part of 10 months for skin that was originally on the eardrum to migrate fully out of the ear. And the migration pattern is similar to, the best analogy I can give is if, imagine you have a pond and you have a pebble and you drop the pebble or stone in the centre of the pond, you'll have this ripple effect with the water waves. And in the same way, the skin on the eardrum, as it dies and sheds and migrates, it does so in a ripple motion from the centre outwards radially it was like a rays of sunshine it, that's the way it migrates out of the ear but in this patient this skin is failing to fully migrate off the eardrum and it's almost folding back upon itself and then creating a, a secondary layer and then a tertiary layer there so i use some drops initially i use some olive oil drops because olive oil drops they are slightly acidic in nature they don't contain any water which would be better for this patient because of their otitis externa but Although it helps slightly, I, I had to use sodium bicarbonate drops in the end. And sodium bicarbonate drops are water-based and they're slightly alkaline in solution. So it's kind of, in, a, in one sense, we want to avoid, if possible, to use that. But I had no choice and I did ensure I got all the excess oil, um, sodium bicarbonate drops off the eardrum and out of the ear canal. And as mentioned, the patient is going to use some acetic acid spray from over the counter to help re-acidify the ear. And you can see the contrast here. You can see the back part of the eardrum, that's the fresh layer of skin. You can actually see the blood vessels and capillaries there. And I've got this thick layer that I'm trying to really tug away. And it, if this was any part of the other part of the ear canal, it'd be a bit simpler because you're less likely to cause the patient any harm or discomfort. And of course, you're not gonna perforate the person's eardrum if you're removing the skin from near the entrance. Whenever you're this close to the eardrum, you just have to be so careful and gentle because one false move and we could quite easily perforate this patient's um, eardrum. But the patient was very, very still, which definitely helped me. So I would say uh, currently we can probably see 30% of their, their, their true eardrum, their underlying eardrum. But we still got this skin here and it's just in the inferior recess. If you look at the bottom where the eardrum is, there's a little trench there, a little basin. And now we're on the anterior recess to the front part of the, ear, of the eardrum. And in the case of the left ear, that's on the left hand side. There's a little uh, alcove there and skin can get trapped in that alcove. And it can also get trapped in the inferior recess of the, the trench, the basin, if you like, at the floor of the eardrum as the skin is migrating. So I'm just looking for a different angle of attack now. And I've decided to go to the roof of the ear canal because there, the skin does extend all the way. It's failing to migrate out of the roof of the ear canal. So this is more the attic region. 
but the skin here is extremely stubborn and it did and it just wasn't budging so uh, I've resorted to the fact that I, I needed to use some sodium bicarbonate drops now this skin is not going to come out by itself it's already folded upon itself twice I believe maybe even three times so I just wanted to remove this because if I didn't it's just gonna uh, the skin itself will just continue to grow and shed and fold upon itself and potentially get infected so at the moment, I'm just trying to drain some of the excess oil. And now I'm trying to find that piece of the end of this dead skin. And I'm trying to get hold of it and then I'm going to peel it away. So even at this stage, the patient can hear significantly better. They did say that they could hear much, much better. But it was only once I removed this dead skin, they realised how much and even I kind of realized how much of an effect this dead skin had had on this patient's hearing it had a significant effect so I'm just going to be really careful normally the skin in the center that's where it's really strongly adhered so almost like the bullseye of the eardrum the skin there typically is just, it's always toughly adhered to to the eardrum itself it's hard to remove from that region so I'm just going to the front now and slowly but surely this skin with the sodium bicarbonate is loosening and that's why sodium bicarbonate is really really good with skin it's far more effective than olive oil when it comes to skin and you can see now it's starting to puff up bubble up this skin is softening and I'm removing it away from the eardrum. It's still attached, stuck in the anterior recess. I managed to dislodge that. And there we go. We're just going to peel it from the roof of the ear canal now. And it came out in one long slither. And the improvement in the patient's hearing was extremely um, significant and they were over the moon. So I'm just going to go back to the ear canal. You can see there's a bit of dead skin here and also the floor. I'm going to try and remove as much as I can. And you may have seen that as I entered the ear, it's quite narrow, but once you're in, it does widen. So we're just on the back part. So it's got slightly blown. The hairs at the entrance, they're a bit oily and wet because of the drop. So I've just come back out with the endoscope, wipe the tip, the distal end to remove any excess and then when I went back in with the, the endoscope, I wanted to try to avoid any of the hair strands so it doesn't smear. And the skin, it wasn't fully going to come out, but this has got more of a chance of migrating than the skin that was remaining on the eardrum. And that's the patient's eardrum. Nice and healthy. You've got a brand new eardrum, brand new ear canal. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys, and you're all keeping well and safe. Uh, if you stay tuned, I've got loads more videos to upload. Take care, keep well, remember, be nice and be kind.